good morning. We welcome you to Grapevine Baptist Church. We're so glad you've chosen to be with us today. Thank you for supporting us online. Thank you for showing up, being a part with us. We pray that you're praying, and I pray that you'll get your Bible and get ready for the Word of God this morning. As you remember... May the 5th, we have a, a prayer on the mountain. That's a time for praying for spiritual awakening in America. The last I looked, there was nearly 90,000 people had committed to this. So do remember to pray on May the 5th for the prayer for spiritual awakening. May 7th is a national day of prayer, so do realize that as well. And thank you for supporting Drive-In Church. We'll be continuing to do that through the remainder of this month. Thank you for being there, and we just ask that you just continue to support us in all that you do. Again, you can give your offerings through the, online. You can bring them by the church. You can mail them in. Thank you for your financial support. If you have prayer needs, again, let us know those. We'll lift those to the Lord. We'll send those out. But again, come to worship. Come to seek the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your grace. I pray, God, you meet with us in a very real way today. Speak to our hearts. Save that one that's lost, God, that's listening, God. Draw them by your Holy Spirit that they would respond to you. Encourage us in the faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me and oh his love for me oh his love for me who the sun sets free oh is free
For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Come on. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our lives. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chain. And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. And every knee will bow before him. Whoa. Come on, let's open up the gates. So open up the gates. Make a way before the king of kings. The God who comes to save. Is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb, and every knee will bow before Him. Who can stop our God? He is unchanging. He is almighty. And who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Come on! And who can stop the Lord Almighty? And who can stop the Lord Almighty? And who can stop the Lord Almighty? And who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord? Come on. And our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Come on. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And every knee will bow before Him. Praise the Lord, church. Our God is the Lion of Judah. Amen. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to 1 John chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Then we're going to be looking over to the story of Abraham in just a moment. Well, Abraham is one of those stories that I can never get away from. He's kind of like Elijah. He's kind of like Paul or Peter, just the stories in Scripture. But 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says this, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Right now, amidst the COVID pandemic, right now, amidst the situations of life, many people are struggling in this area of faith. Christians are struggling in this area of faith. You see, the Bible teaches us you can have no faith, you can have weak faith, you can have little faith, you can have great faith. But the Bible also shows us that the victory comes by our faith rightly placed in the very person of Jesus Christ. So let me ask you a question. Are you facing discouragement right now? Have you ever been disillusioned in your life? Maybe you found a moment of despair going on inside you. Discouragement comes from a lack of courage. It's a loss of confidence. Disillusionment, this feeling of disappointment when you, you learn something is not as good as you thought it was going to be. Your expectations did not get met. Despair, that sense of uselessness and all hope is gone. They come to all walks of life. 
You can be a preacher. You can be a singer. You can be a lost person. You will face moments of discouragement, moments of despair, moments of disillusionment. And yet for the child of God, for those who know Jesus as their personal Savior, we hear these words. If you really love God correctly, this wouldn't be happening to you. And in our minds, we know that's not true. But we sit somehow, if I just tried a little bit harder, maybe it would be all right. And so in the process of these issues of life, in the process of facing disappointment, appointments in life, in the process of facing discouragement in life, some people quit. They say, I've had it. They quit church. They quit the word of God. They quit serving Christ. They quit seeking God. Some people settle down to a mediocre lifestyle. And yet some people, they push in and they push on to the glory of God. And what you have to understand as a child of God, when you read the Bible, you have to learn to face your fears in faith. I saw a t-shirt, I saw a sign this week, and it simply had faith over fear. And that's what you as a child of God, you've got to understand. Faith doesn't come natural. It doesn't come just because you age chronologically. It comes as you make a choice in your life to live to the glory of God. Now, now look in your Bible now to the book of Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. And it came to pass after these things that God did test Abraham and said unto Abraham, he said, behold, here I am. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee unto the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, Isaac his son, and claved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. When you come to this story, you might be like me. You say, how could Abraham do such a thing? How could Abraham respond in such a way? Abraham, he is not listed as one in the Bible who, who ever parted a body of water like, like Noah or, or Moses did. He is not listed as one who built an ark like Noah did. He is not listed as one who walked on water like Peter did. He never called down fire from heaven as Elijah did, but Abraham knew what it was to move with God, to walk with God, and that's what our calling is. We've got to walk with God, move with God, even in the darkest moments of life, even in the most difficult times Times in life, he stood by faith. And we say, how could God, because we've got a misconception of God. We think God is some grandfatherly individual who winks at our sin. He doesn't. God is a God worthy to be praised, worthy to be worshipped, worthy to be yielded to. And if you don't understand listening to God and responding to God, you're far away from God. And when Abraham heard God speak, he responded. It says, after these things. After what? things after he had left everything he knew after he had packed up and left the Ur of the Chaldeas after he had taken his wife and said honey we're going somewhere I don't know where it is but we're going to live in a tent after the promise of God came that said you're going to have a baby after my friends he had heard God after he had obeyed God after all these things God gave the greatest challenge yet into his life God will test your faith. It was no accident what was happening with Abraham. Trials came, temptations came, issues came. Storms and how we respond to them, they will build our character, increase our faith as we learn to respond to them biblically. See, 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 you have to learn to keep moving through adversity. You have to keep moving through the oppositions of the world. Do you remember the story of Job? 
Job had three friends who were miserable counselors, but they did say one thing right over in Job chapter 8. They said, can rush grow without mire? Rush was a weed that it grew, and they used it to line the bottom of boats in so that the boat would float. And here he's saying, your faith will not go forth without being first put in the muck in the mire of life, and you face the difficulties and challenges of life. You have to learn to respond to those challenges. It's like the little child who finds a cocoon of a, of a butterfly or would-be butterfly. And that little child in all their excitement, they, they start to break it open and try to help the butterfly out. And what happens is as the baby butterfly, it comes out into the world, it will soon die because God so designed the butterfly as it's inside that cocoon that it needs the effort of breaking forth the cocoon so that the fluids inside of its wings can go where it needs to be and it can be strong and it can live. And that's how life is with us. We face difficulties, we face trials, we face testing because God is trying to develop us to build us into men and women of faith, to build us into men and women of character and not fluff. God prepared Abraham and God prepares you after these things. The promise of God had come. Do you remember David, that great man in the Bible, the king of Israel? He started as a young shepherd boy and he's out there in the field and nobody knows his name and nobody knows where he is and he takes and he kills a lion and he kills a bear. God's gonna put you in situations by yourself where nobody knows about you and you will either slay the lion, slay the bear because there's a giant coming and you've gotta kill a bear and a lion before you'll ever face a giant. Daniel was 85 years old. He found himself in the midst of a lion's den. Why didn't God let things run smoothly for this man who had been faithful to him since he was a teenager? Why wasn't this man allowed just to relax? No, the greatest challenges of our life are always ahead. God puts us in the fire to prepare us. And these tests that come, they come suddenly. See, when things are going well, when things are running smoothly, God speaks, crisis shows up. That's why it's imperative to learn to live by faith in the normal routine of life. Are you living by faith in the normal routine of life? Are you too busy with life? You've got too many irons in the fire, too many places to go, too many people to see, to adjust yourself to the Word of God and the standard of God's people. And when God tests us, He often tests us at the tenderest points in our life. God told Abraham, take your son Isaac, your miracle baby, your son of promise, and offer him. Nothing was more precious to Abraham than his boy. Now understand his boy wasn't a little boy at this time. He was a grown man in his full right. See, God tests us at those tender moments of life. Corey Ten Boom said this, learn to hold on to the things of the world loosely because it hurts when God pries your fingers back. Nothing must come before God. Now let me ask you something. This is the first time in Genesis 22 the word worship is used in the Bible. It has nothing to do with music. Do you understand that? It has nothing to do with music. Actually, the first song was not sang until Exodus chapter 15 when the children of Israel came across the Red Sea. That's the first time you find singing in Scripture. So all through the 50-some chapters of Genesis and all through the first part of the book of Exodus, you don't even find singing. You don't find music as such. So you need to understand, worship has nothing to do with music. And I'm saying that to my musicians sitting here today because they need to understand if they think it does, they've never even experienced God. Because if you want to find out what worship is about, you look to the book of Revelation chapter 4 when John caught up into the very presence of Almighty God in glory and the 24 elders were around the throne of Almighty God and all of a sudden, here it was, those living creatures, they were there and the elders, it said they, 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 they fell down before God and they, they cast their crown before God. 
And they said, they said, they did not sing, worthy to receive honor, to receive glory, to receive power. That's how you see what worship is. Worship is what Abraham's doing in Genesis chapter 22. It always starts with your heart being submitted to him. See, 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 what we've done is we've adulterated with the world. And we say, oh, it's about getting everybody up. That's a lie. It's about getting everybody doing a certain thing. No, 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 no. If you don't have a heart that's fallen before God in submission, you ain't ever worshiped him. That's why we come together in large stadiums and people go through all the motions, but they don't know Jesus, but they have said, oh, I had a worship experience. No, 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 no. There has to be that casting of yourself down before him. If you don't do that, you don't know worship. You you see, you got to understand the theology of worship before you can even lead worship. And if you don't understand theology of worship, you're just directing something. Abraham worshiped, first time using the Bible. He worshiped God. Elders fell down. First thing is submission. They cast their crown. In that day when, when, when an emperor would come in, you would say, I completely surrender everything. You give your crown to the emperor. And they said, I give my crown. It is absolute surrender. See, that's what worship is. It's absolute surrender of your life. And if you haven't got, if you've got area, if you're not tithing, you ain't absolutely surrendered. If you're not witnessing, if you're not in the word of God hungering, are you getting it? Because you see, when test comes, this is what it's about. I'm being tested, but I'm going to worship. They said, worthy is the lamb to receive glory, honor, and power. Isn't that what we want in the world? Because that's what the world tells us that's important. We need to have glory. We need to have honor. We need to have power. And see, see you're, you're guilty everything. Then you go to Revelation chapter 5. First thing they did, what they do? They fall down. Abraham worshiped God. And that's what we have to understand. God will test us at our tenderest parts. John Bunyan was this great preacher of way gone back. He wrote the book Pilgrim's Progress. He was put in prison for preaching the gospel. He had a young daughter who was blind, and they said, we will release you to take care of your daughter who is blind, but you have to stop preaching. Bunyan stayed in jail. Your tenderest points is often where God test you now listen to me Abraham is an old man here Daniel was an old man before the lies did see he doesn't throw the big stuff at you when you're still wet behind the ears we think it's the big stuff it's not the big stuff because as you walk with him and you start releasing everything to him. Then he starts saying, I'm going to take you deeper. And the only way you're ever going to get deeper is by releasing to me everything. That's faith being built. See, And sometimes when these tests come, the test seems to be a contradiction. Because you see, here it is that, 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 that Abraham said, this is your son Isaac, your son of promise. And all the world, the land is going to be blessed by him. And now he's saying, take and, and, and offer him as a sacrifice to me. How can the word of God contradict the word of God? It doesn't. And when people say there's contradictions, it's no, it's our understanding is limited. Because God doesn't contradict himself. Acts chapter 12, you find Simon Peter, he's, he, he's in jail. He, he's getting ready to be killed. So how does that go with what Jesus had told him in John chapter 20? He said, when you're an old man, he's getting ready to have his head cut off the next day. See, see God says, no, 
I will test you. Is it, will you trust my word? Will you walk in my word? Will you yield to my word day in, day out? See, see when, when Abraham took Isaac, he, he took him to offer him a burnt sacrifice, a burnt offering to God. He was going to slay him. I can't comprehend this. See, see, see we, we sit there and say, Lord, I don't understand because I can't comprehend this. Right, because God never asked us to do this such a thing. And so, so he's getting ready to slay and God stops him. But a burnt offering was burnt completely to nothing but ashes, but ashes. Abraham, he had such faith, he knew that God could raise him up and put him back together amidst the ash. Why? Because he said, my God is able. My God is alive. It says in verse 5, Abraham said unto the young men, abide here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and we will come again you well that's faith all in that verse now let me let me offend you with the Bible there's a whole lot of folks who want to stand by a bunch of asses and they miss the presence of God now I didn't say it that's what the Bible says because we want to try to figure it out in our limited mindset Instead of saying, Lord, I surrender, I submit. You see, stay here. We got a whole lot. They say, well, I, I'm going to do it this way, and I'm going to do it that way. And they never meet God. They get stirred up emotionally, and it wears off. It doesn't impact. And look what it says in verse 8. And Abraham, my son, God will provide himself a lamb, a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Verse 9. Last verse, part of the verse. And bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar. There's some things we've got to tie down on the altar of God. And most of that's ourself. Where we say, Lord, here I am. And he drew back to slay his son. And the word of God came. We want the word of God to come up here in verse 1, Right? We want the Word of God to come before we get into the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? We want the Word of God to come before we go into the mouth of the lion's den with the lions. But the Word of God came. Guys, the Word of God is still coming. The Word of God is still speaking. So, 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 so how, do you, how do you live this? How do you apply this? Well, first off, God's will requires obedience. And sometimes there's no explanation, and oftentimes it does not make sense. But God's will requires obedience. Obedience means I adjust my life to the Word of God. See, see, that's the second thing. There is a cost to faith. There's a cost to faithlessness also, but there is a cost to faith. You're not going to find it in easy believism, whip people up emotionally. There's a cost to living by faith. And trials bring understanding. Abraham, we call him the father of the faith. How did he get that title? He endured. He made mistakes, yes. He blew it many times, yes. But he continued faithful. He went back and built altars. He sought the face of God. Man, salvation comes instantaneous to that person who responds in faith to Christ as the Spirit of God's convicted and they repent. But, but sanctification is progressive where God makes us more like Christ. We don't like storms. We don't like rain. But without them, we don't have a harvest, do we? And we get so busy looking at ourselves. We're not even looking at a harvest. And here's the fourth thing you've got to take away. Sometimes God doesn't stop the test. It could be three weeks. It could be three months. It could be three years. It could be a lifetime. But the issue is the same. Will you trust God? I hope so. How do you trust him? You stay focused on Christ. You stay focused 
on the Word. You live in the Word. You see, it's not enough just to read it. Say, oh, I read my three verses today. You got to get in it so it gets in you. And you adjust to it. So we'll go through struggles. Most of us were in a struggle like right now because we're in a new type of normal. God's got this. But he's saying, you follow my will, my way. And so many times what, what, what goes on around us in society is going to be contradictory to the way of God. But you've got to follow God's way. If you're lost and God is speaking to your heart, cry out to Jesus. He will save you. There's a number you can call. And you can be connected with someone who can speak to you about your becoming a child of God. But obey Christ. Father, we thank you for this morning. I pray, God, you take this word, burn it into our heart. Give us understanding, God, that we go through difficulties, we go through struggles, and you have it all arranged for your glory because you're worthy to receive honor and glory and power. And teach us, God, total submission to you. Save that one that's lost right now, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now the Savior now to wash our feet now at his feet we bow the one who wore our sin and shame now robed in majesty the radiance of perfect love now shines for all to see in your name in your name your name is victory all praise will rise to Christ our King. In your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. What a God we serve. fear that held us snug his way. The fear that held us now gives way to him who is our peace. A final breath upon the cross is now alive in me. We sing your name, Lord. And your name your name is victory. Our praise will rise to Christ our King. In your name, your name is victory. Our praise will rise to Christ our I will rise from the ashes of defeat 
The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. He's resurrecting me. Soldiers watched in vain Was borrowed for three days His body there would not remain Our God has robbed the grave Our God has robbed the Thank you for being with us today. I hope God has encouraged you, blessed you. Call somebody and encourage him to tune in at some other time if they want to watch this broadcast later. But we thank you again. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love. Guide us, speak to us, use us for your glory this week, God. And Father, teach us daily that we are to decrease and you're to increase. In Jesus' name, amen.